will start coming up with questions that can help them determine uh, their style or the location. So something, where do you guys uh, enjoy going for brunch? Or where did you meet? Or how did you meet? Or uh, how did you propose? Or is it your neighborhood that you wanna have in photos as a background? Because let's say like 30 years from now, it's not gonna look like it uh, looks right now. So maybe it's something that you wanna document and have as part of your lives, as part of your memories. It's, it's a treasure. So um, that's definitely like one of the most important things that we uh, talk about with our clients. So today we are back on the podcast with owners and founders of Purple Tree Photography, Sasha and Svetlana. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. It's nice to see you again. Thanks for having us. Yeah, hi. For sure. Can you believe, and I, you know, like obviously I say this a lot, but it's been a year and a half since you guys were in the studio here with the gold mics, which was, feels like a long time ago. And it was really, and yeah, we're, pretty stoked, we're pretty stoked about the upcoming 2020, which was supposed to be the biggest year for weddings. <laughs> yeah. A lot have happened since then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no kidding. I think let's, let's put it this way. <laughs> It's crazy. Like January 2020, I think we were all like feeling just like this is going to be epic. And I don't know if it's with numbers that are associated with like 2020 and it just had a ring to it. But obviously it came and went and it did its thing. And it's here we are in 2021. A year and a half from now, we'll be like, remember this COVID thing? <laughs> we'll be like, so. what COVID thing? <laughs> that, that's, that's how I want to feel. <laughs> yeah. That was the it's last like, time we spoke. Oh my God, that was so long ago. Just stricken the word from the dictionary altogether. I'll, I'll keep dreaming. <laughs> yeah. Let's all sure. keep dreaming. For sure. Well, today we're going to keep dreaming because we're going to dream about engagement photos. And the reason I wanted to talk about this specifically uh, with you guys is um, obviously for anyone listening. And if you haven't seen the origin story of Purple Tree Photography, you can head over to our website and watch season one, episode number 16, where they broke down everything from their background and also how it got started. And we had a lot of fun on that episode. And um, so with you guys being photography studio in the city, I know you're probably having inquiries. I think we're all seeing inquiries for 2022 at this point with Christmas just passing and Valentine's Day just passing as well. People are engaged. So it's the proposal season. For sure. It's proposal season, and people are probably thinking, "What's the next step, or what's the first step?" Um, and of course, there are a lot of steps when it comes to planning a wedding. But photography is very, very important. And I think talking about engagement photos, especially now as well, because it's like, do we, don't we? What's what are things going to look like? I, it would be good to just go over the importance of them, or whether they're important, and kind of how you guys really talk about that with your couples as well. Are you into it? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. So let's talk about what, when it comes to engagement photos, how does it work necessarily in terms of if they're booking with you, then are they already a booked client? And then you guys talk about engagement photos at that point. Right. So let's say we do book a random one-offs engagement sessions um for the most part because the couple doesn't know the wedding day yet uh or they're getting married really far away uh, you know and they potentially have a local photographer already hired there uh, but they still want to do their engagement session here in toronto and then we do have some one-off engagement sessions booked for the couples where the wedding already kind of happened and then they never did it before the event hmm. And they kind of feel like they're missed out or, you know, they want to document their story a little bit more, you know, because I always say, you know, the wedding photos will tell a great story about one specific day in your life, right? Your wedding day. With engagement photos, it's more of an opportunity to tell a story about your lifestyle, you know, about who you guys are as a couple, with how you like spending your days together before you get busy with other things in life, you know, <laughs> when you kind of go to the next status. <laughs> and For get sure. busy with you know the little ones and for sure, but when a traditional couple comes to us, we do have packages with engagement shoot and packages without engagement shoot. So they can always choose on spot if, if either they want to do it or not. But we do have a lot of clients who come in and they're so excited about their wedding day, they start to plan it. And when we ask them, so what do you guys think about engagement photos? 
it feels for some couple, oh, we didn't even think about it. So it's kind of like something they start thinking on the spot. So good thing is that they can always add it later when they think about, because we understand that there's so much stress sometimes when planning your wedding. There are so many little things to think about that engagement photos are sometimes overlooked, but um, with our, like the proportion of um, people who are doing engagement photos or not, like I think majority is still do engagement photos and we absolutely it's, it's love this. It's definitely around 75%. So most people, you know, plan them, enjoy them. They definitely know that they want to do those, those sessions. When do they typically happen? It depends on, depends on how far in advance they're <laughs> no, planning. No, nothing is typical anymore. <laughs> exactly. That's one thing. That's one exactly. thing. That's an important point. <laughs> So it depends. So some couples would want to uh, use the photos from the engagement session for save the dates. So in that case, they, they, they prefer to do those sessions mm -hmm. sooner than later, like way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, so the save the dates are usually sent out, what, at least like a year before. Um, other couples will use those photos for the actual invitations. Um, some couples just do it for other reasons. So to get like a, an experience, um, you know, if they're a little bit nervous or uh, they feel that they might be awkward in front of the camera, they don't have much of an experience being in front of a professional camera, then they would typically do the engagement session a little bit closer to the wedding day so that experience is still fresh. They kind of remember yeah, so they still how have, it feels. They still remember <laughs> how it is to be in front of the camera and like get those directions and how the photos are going to look so that can kind of put them at ease. So there's no, there's no right time. Sometimes there's a specific theme in mind and they want to do it with all the nice fall colors. So for sure we have to do it, you know, yeah. very specific week in October. Uh, some will want to do the cherry blossoms. Uh, so again, like that's a very specific time of the year. Uh, there are still a few clients who like their winter wonderland theme and like we'll do it in winter, but that's probably minority. <laughs> but that's kind of cool that there is no such thing as typical anymore. That's what mm -hmm. I love about weddings these days, you know? Mm -hmm. Like people want to do it special and they kind of cater to who they are and how they want to do it specifically. Like some people do like three weeks before, but some other people like year and a half, which is a cool thing. But we also have couples who are doing exactly a year before the wedding. So kind of like almost like commemorate the date like this is how we'll look the year before our actual wedding uh so it's kind of cool yeah, yeah. So we'll, so we'll do more than one engagement session too that's true <laughs> oh is that is that right yeah, yeah yeah that happens i think last year we had one couple that had five engagement sessions but before the wedding all three the wedding, wedding? Five, five different themes five different locations so wow. yeah like you know people some people it's, enjoy it more than others. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, for some people, it is fun to be in front of the camera. It is fun to document, you know, all the different. So sticking on that, because that's really interesting. If they had five ahead of time, did they, and you said different themes, yeah. what was kind of like, was it like a coffee shop they maybe met at, or is it activities or is it more cultural or what were the themes? So no, they were not, they were not cultural. It just, you know, they had, they had all these different ideas and decided why do we need to pick one <laughs> oh, cool. if we can do, if we can do all of them. So, you know, like a few of those, I think two out of five were kind of like, they treated them almost like a style shoot. So they had like all the different outfits. So it was a little bit more editorial uh, to, two other shoots were a little bit more lifestyle and candy. So we kind of followed them around the city. And then we had one shoot that was outside the Cambridge area, so something like very outdoorsy where we took them wow. you know, to a nice hiking trail. Yeah, so again, yeah, like very, very, very different. It's kind of cool. You can have so many memories together. Because yeah. like when you think about like how many professional photo shoots can you do like in a, in a lifetime, especially with your loved one? Because I know like some girls are, are into the photos, but like to have something to display in your house and have different themes, like I think it's really cool. Yeah, that's so neat. It's kind of it's kind of cool to see this tendency. And that's something we've seen in receptions and cocktail hours too. They take some of the photos that you guys have taken earlier pre-wedding, and then they've blown them up, or they've even I've seen. Uh, had people sign them as like their, their yeah. guest book as well, which is kind of an interesting take on that too. But I do like the idea of, you know, if you are going to do an engagement photo, which is something I want to talk about too, 
just kind of getting into the ba- what your background is as a couple or what you guys would like to do. Do a lot of people look to you guys more for where should we go, what should we do, or is it a like what do you usually suggest for them to do? Well, I'd say first, like people don't know what to do, right? So like yeah. they're they they have so many questions, and uh, one thing we tell all our couples is it's kind of. I don't want to say boring, but it's pretty basic if we choose a random park for you that you're going to go and kiss in front of random trees. So this is something that we want to avoid at all costs. So we'll start coming up with questions that can help them determine uh, their style or the location. So something, where do you guys uh, enjoy going for a brunch? Or where did you meet? Or how did you meet? Or uh, how did you propose? Or is it your neighborhood that you want to have in photos as a background? Because let's say like 30 years from now, it's not going to look like it uh, looks right now. So maybe it's something that you want to document and have as part of your life, as part of your memories. It's, it's a treasure. So um, that's definitely like one of the most important things that we uh, talk about with our clients. So definitely try to avoid suggesting or recommending themes or locations ourselves. So we'll try to probe them as much as possible. Some of them will know ahead of time. They know exactly what they want. And, you know, uh, for others, there is a bit of probing and we'll kind of like guide them and help them. Uh, but yeah, but psychology 101, <laughs> asking right questions so they can get the right answers. Right. Okay. But then they're going to, they're also going to enjoy those photos a lot more and then they will tell a much, much better story. So, and then recently, uh, well, I wouldn't say recently as in the last couple of months, but in the last few years, even the at-home sessions have become very popular. You know, like somebody buys their first home together, which is pretty common these days to do that before even getting married. Uh, you know, and then they kind of want to document that where there's still like, sometimes it's not even like fully furnished, you know, and then- It's like almost empty actually, yeah, in a lot of cases, yeah. which is actually good for photos because it's for much the, easier. For photos for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so no, definitely, definitely at teamwork, the collaboration, like quite a few brainstorming sessions. We work a lot with pin boards or we use Instagram uh, where, you know, our couples would kind of collect all the inspirational ideas and share them with us. So sometimes there'll be like a little bit of back and forth. So, you know, we'll contribute to those pin boards ourselves. Um, yeah, so why don't we show that we tell kind of unique, unique stories about each individual couple as opposed to going back to you know, the same old park, as kind of said, <laughs> just because we like it. <laughs> Change the initials in the tree to a different name. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then in terms of timing, so if I'm thinking, okay, I would like to book engagement photos, is it half a day? Is it a full day? How much time is required on my end in order to do something like that? Obviously, it depends on location, but I, in typical engagement package style. So our engagements are 90 minutes long, and this is it's a great time from our experience if you're taking photos like specific photos for more than that it's really hard if you're not a professional model it's really hard to be focused for such a long time and to be let's say in a public place to be like intimate in front of the camera so like from our experience definitely not more than that but usually like more than one hour because sometimes it's hard right like first 15 minutes it's awkward and this is normal this is okay so it takes time to feel relaxed so this is like the great kind of like standard that we found for ourselves and for our couples that works really well for sure so so yeah it it takes it takes 10 to 15 minutes to kind of get into the groove and you know relax in front of the lens like it takes us some time to kind of you know use some of our tricks (laughs) to make sure that, that 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 they are ready um I would say 90 minutes, two hours sometimes, you know, if there are lots of great ideas or if there are multiple locations within reasonable distance, like anything over two hours, especially for the guys, it's a little too much. <laughs> they start kind of getting distracted and thinking about that. The some thing. girls are going strong, like yeah. five hours. It's almost like, okay, you can go now. Like, <laughs> now I'm going to take some solo shots. <laughs> but yeah, 90, 90 minutes is kind of like a sweet spot. Um, nevertheless, sometimes a little bit more than that. Yeah, and I think that's probably, and I like one of the biggest reasons for engagement photos as well is even just that connection that you guys are able to establish with them in that time frame, and and to know how it works, um, right. because even from a video perspective, when we are on site for a wedding, they'll say, okay, how do I place? What do I do? And video is so much different from photo in the sense of movement versus posing, and so it's just interesting for them to be able to understand how you guys will direct them, and then they're able to kind of flow into it a little bit easier in that sense. 
and as you said, like, you know, that's another touch point, another opportunity to kind of get to know your photographer. So, you know, sometimes either before or after, like we'll go grab a drink or two, <laughs> and, you know, like talk more about their wedding day planning, like just, you know, um, get to know them better, like ask them questions about their family members, people in their bridal party. Uh, you know, so it's not, we're not, it's not just, just, just for the photos. Like this is, this is a great opportunity to get to know your photographer Amazing. and vice versa and your couple. And what happens, and I mean, especially now in this non-typical world, <laughs> uh, what happens with, like, do people typically, and I went back to typically, but do people <laughs> usually have hair and makeup completed when they do their engagement? Right. So they it used to happen more often with trials when people do this. So now it's a very different situation. So we actually, we haven't done any engagement sessions since November 23rd. So that's, a long time. Mm -hmm. so that's true. Yeah. So now I hope that they're going to start happening soon, mm -hmm. ending the news. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, definitely like last year in summer, whenever this time slot when we were allowed, outdoor sessions were permitted but we definitely didn't do as many as we hoped to right. yeah well yeah to answer your question so yes a lot of brides will book their makeup trial on the same day as they schedule the engagement session so just a, always a really good idea because you know not only you will see how the makeup looks on on you in the mirror but you also see how you know it looks on the photos and i know i know for sure that you know i've, I've had quite a few uh, Bryce myself <laughs> to the set, right? <laughs> yeah, and no, but uh, where you know, like it would come from the makeup artist, and I would be like, oh my god, like I've never had this much makeup on me. Like, how does it look? How does it look? Right. You know, and then I always say, you know what? Like the ca the camera really loves makeup, That's so true. even if you think that it's all too much, like on the photos, it will look absolutely amazing. So you know, you the makeup that you get for your wedding day and for the photos is very different from the makeup that you will get every you know, day, on a, like every every day or even like you know, when you go to like a, a birthday dinner or or any other event. It, it also answers a lot of questions about retouching that we get, like how my skin looks. Yeah. If you get professional makeup, uh, professional hair, then you have professional camera and professional <laughs> editing. All and of this and professional photographer. <laughs> uh, the combination of all those factors uh, basically like will give you the look that you want to have. Uh, so it answers all the questions even after engagement shoot. So brides feel much more comfortable and confident on a wedding day. So that's another reason why we love doing this. Yeah, and then and at the same time, if there is any feedback that you want to provide after, like to your makeup artist, to your hairstylist, to your mm -hmm. photographer. You know, if you want to see a, bit, a little bit less or more specific things, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's a really good opportunity. To... That's a great point. Just to get that ability to see first and then you can make mm -hmm. adjustments at that point. Because it is true, the camera, I mean, especially doing a video podcast, the things you learn about makeup as well, it's like TV where you need a little bit more essentially to, but the camera sees it different than the naked eye sees it. So 100%. in a flattering way for the most part. <laughs> So what is, do you have any uh, out there engagement photo sessions that you've done? I'm going to tell you one concept story just because this one's okay. a little, this one's a little while you sit on that, just because this one was kind of funny where we don't do so much engagement sessions when it comes to video, but we do a concept mm -hmm. film if someone's interested. That's and good. so we had a client one time ask us to recreate the intro to Gone in 60 Seconds. And so when I first heard this, because I'm not overly familiar with the movie, I thought I was going to have to close down the 401 and hire <laughs> actors and like learn how to stunt drive. But then once I looked at the movie, I was able to understand what it was. And we recreated that intro, which then led into their same day edit on the day of their wedding. And so that for us was one of like those different kind of, it's like an engagement shoot for us, essentially creating something like that for them. But what do you think? Have you guys had anything that, or any places that you went that really stood out to you or anything wild and crazy in the, your adventures? The one that comes to my mind is probably the underwater shoot that we did for That's one couple. Mm. <laughs> so, that was cool. So that was, that was a mission, but that was a very exciting challenge. Uh, that only cost us one, one camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Uh, is it underwater in a pool or underwater in a lake? In or? a pool. Okay. In a pool. So, um, 
So when she, when, when, when both, well, both of them showed up for the initial consultation, they're like, yeah, so we have this crazy idea. We really want to take some underwater photos uh, for our engagement session. And I didn't even think twice. I think I'm like, okay, fine, let's do it. <laughs> and obviously I had zero experience with underwater photography before, but uh, you know, kind of, it kind of puts me on the spot and I got so excited that I didn't even think about it. And uh, so I'm like, oh, I'll just stick with many things in my home. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> How we're going to do it. So then uh, we, when we went to New York a few weeks later. I uh, went to B and H and bought those underwater uh, cases. So basically you just use your regular DSLR camera and then you put your camera inside a case um, and then yeah, you can basically use it underwater. Uh, the trick is that you can, only you can only use it as a shutter release. So if you need to change any settings on the camera, you basically you have, to, open the whole you have thing. to open the whole thing, adjust the settings, lock, close it again, like go back under the water. Uh, yeah, so we did it at their friend, well, it was supposed to be a friend's pool. And when we arrived to the friend's place, the pool was not very clean. Uh, so you see like speckles. Yeah. And, so like, and like for a camera, like you can't. It wasn't perfect for the photos. Luckily, friends' neighbors were on vacation, so we're down south. And their pool was perfect. So, <laughs> so we ended up using, using this, you know, this people's backyard and their, and their pool. Uh, so we brought some with their permission. With their permission, <laughs> yeah. But they were not. They were not there. You need to mention so that. To call them, but they're like, yeah, go go ahead. Do it. That's amazing. Uh, so yeah, so I had to go to the neighbors. We, we should send a photo so you can attach. It was a photo. I would love that. So, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, and then we use the what are they called? The muslin backdrops, so that we had to cover the the interior of the pool. So it was like black material. Because the inspiration was kind of like dark waters, so like yeah. you don't see. Wow. The tile, like it's, yeah. so. Oh, I see. So we covered the entire pool with those with 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 those fabrics. So we had to use all the different like gym weights to to keep it <laughs> keep it down there. Uh, and then you know, not only I didn't have any experience shooting underwater, but I also didn't didn't know how hard it is to stay under the water. <laughs> with I wasn't as scuba good license, that. you were in a scuba scuba diving it no no anyway. just, just, just. <laughs> yeah so it was fun it was fun that's uh, a really that's a cool one was it was it shot a day or in the evening it was shot during, during, during the day, the day, during the sure. day. yeah yeah but it did have the very dramatic light uh and because of the you know dark backdrop like it looked it looked very dramatic for sure but you'll yeah. see the it's, some, some uh, it's really yeah. interesting. It's so interesting what people like different ideas that people can come up with. Yeah, but my favorite were probably um, engagement shoots that we shot in New York, in Greece. Like I love anywhere, anything outside of Toronto. <laughs> I can maybe maybe even now like trying to dream about all those places. Right. That that was pretty cool. So that would be top of my list. Awesome. Well. Um, the next question, so I had Instagram pulled um, our audience and mm -hmm. somebody was inquiring about photo booths. Now, this is something, obviously this is, a, this is a trend happening. What's your take on photo booths? Do you want to share a full story? Um, <laughs> I, think, I think photo booths kind of go through a bit of a roller coaster of a, a demand. Um, so they're definitely still popular. Uh, probably not as popular as about five or six years ago. I find that what we call the step and repeat, the red carpet type of photography uh, is, is coming back instead. Uh, but it also doesn't stop you from doing both. You can have the, you know, the step and repeat red carpet photography during the cocktail hour and then photo booth out there, you know, later in the evening once your dance floor opens. Um, so we used, to, we used to offer them ourselves as an add-on service to our couples. Um, and then, and then we kind of decided not to, and, and then just kind of stick with our main, main service and provide an exceptional service there, as opposed to kind of trying to mm -hmm. spread our services. Uh, photo booths are tricky. Um, you know, there's, there's no single big company that produces top of the line equipment for them. So instead, for, for anyone who's never seen the backside of the photo booth, uh, it's basically almost like a DIY thing with so many different moving components. So it can be a, a tablet from Microsoft, the camera from Canon, uh, I don't know, the light or the flash from, from L&B. <laughs> um, 
so 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 there's 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 a big chance that something can go wrong uh and then you know like for, for us we just decided to kind of drop it because it, it was it was it was just a little too distracting for our liking mm -hmm. uh, there are tons of great photo booth service companies uh, out there in this industry there are also lots of really bad companies out there as well um you know it happens so many times when during the dinner or you're, you're you're taking photos on the dance floor and then you have this photo booth attendant running up to you uh, like hey, do, you, do you do you know anything about camera settings like something is wrong like can you come and check my photo booth and then you know so right. the, the systems themselves are sometimes like very wobbly shaky and just not reliable but also the people who run the photo booth sometimes have, don't know anything about the gear that's in there or anything about the camera settings so it can be risky so for anyone who's interested in uh having a photo booth at their wedding like i think it's still a great great idea but you know, it has to be a very reliable company. It has to be a reliable company. Don't try to save a couple hundred dollars because it's just going to turn into a disaster. So, you know, if you're paying less than 900, 1,000 bucks for your photo booth service, like guaranteed something's going to go wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting, yeah, that's very interesting um, and a really good point. And also, like you said, a step and repeat or a photo booth. So there's two different options for the opportunity to get shots of your guests. Right at some point prior to the reception or during the reception or during the dance party. So, and then sticking so, on budget, because the second question that was asked was in regards to how much someone should invest on photo and video together. So when they're thinking about their budgeting, and of course we, we can't necessarily speak for people's budgets, but what's kind of your take they, on that question? That's tough too, like, you know, everyone has their own preferences. For some people, photos and videos are less important and then they would rather spend more money on food and entertainment for the guests because you know it's almost like asking how much should i you know spend on on a car you know like some people will drop three four hundred thousand dollars or even more and get like a really good car others will buy a very reliable car that will last them you know for 15 years and then pay under 30k um you know so there are options out there for sure so you can find a photographer videographer on a budget um but you know still there are obviously some risks associated with that um, and, you know, I feel like nowadays there is, there is a service provider for, for everyone out there. Sure. But if we're talking about kind of like average quality, uh, average in terms of the price, but good quality, uh, photography, videography, like I would probably budget without the albums or like any extras, extras, I would, I would easily budget 15 like twelve to fifteen thousand dollars for for both services. Yeah, and I think it really goes back to their priorities and that's true. you know thinking about okay, this is where I want to put that bulk of money, um, and then research. I feel like a lot of this, yeah. what we've said and what you've mentioned, really about just doing research about your photo booth company, and also yeah. like there's so much research that you should do before um, you know booking with services, mm -hmm. but. It's or, or also like the time the time commitment too. well research is, is part of it as well and then even after the wedding as well you know you can find talented photographers videographers uh who you know run it on their own and then they just don't have a time in the day to manage everything and then it takes you months and months to receive your final video or final phot photography gallery and even if the final product is great but the the time that you spend chasing that person <laughs> It's not worth it. It might, not, it might not be worth saving like a couple hundred dollars. So, but again, for some people, it's not as important. Which is an important point to make actually, um, is actually asking that question, how long until the final product is delivered? And for the companies to be upfront in, with that question. It's really important to put it in the contract, the delivery dates for your final product. Make sure that you check your contract for this because it's so easy to get excited about like signing the contract and like getting this vendor uh, on your wedding day, but make sure you know exactly what you're getting and when you're getting it. Mm -hmm. And the payment schedule that aligns with that as well. I mean, okay. you, you, <laughs> Ding! <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing timing. That was good timing. Uh, you basically kind of like need to come up with a list of all the things that are important to you when it comes to photography, videography and kind of prioritize them and figure out what are the things that you are willing to kind of give up on and what are the things that are you know extremely important to you and you wouldn't want to take any chances right 
you know, so again, like if you want quality photos, but you're okay to wait a couple extra months. Yep. And you know, that's, 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 that's totally fine. And the interesting part we, we did learn today right at the beginning was that you can get your engagement photos post wedding. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't necessarily redo your wedding, but you can at least, you know, have that option to go back and get those photos, which is really cool. I mean, you can redo some of your wedding portraits as well. I think we talked about this in the, in the previous. That's true. Some, uh, some people do that when they yeah. don't have enough time on the wedding day. They say, instead of doing engagement photos, can we just wear, like, can I just wear my wedding dress? And can we just like do some extra photos? Because why not? Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And this is before the wedding as well. Uh, sometimes, sometimes before, before sometimes, sometimes after. after. Right. Yeah. Sometimes, like for girls, I know not everyone wants to reveal their wedding dress before the actual wedding right. date. So it's kind of fun for them to do it after because like it's less stress and they're just having more fun and uh, there's no like specific timeline or like where guests are waiting for you. No one's calling you. So you can just like enjoy and relax. That's a big thing in uh, destination weddings as well. So they might wake up in the sunrise, like there's the sunrise, they're going to put their wedding dress back on and head out to the water and maybe yeah. do an underwater shoot. <laughs> now that yeah. <laughs> we know you're an underwater warrior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to crash the dress. That's how it was cool. Yeah, no. But no, well, I haven't heard that for like years now. No, I yeah, think, like yeah. <laughs> I think they put a hold on that, um, which is probably a good thing, but. Yeah, good thing for sure. I agree. Yeah. Well, thanks guys for uh, stopping in today to sit down and chat. Before I let you go, I have one question okay. in regards to what's been your favorite either activity or product that you discovered in 2020 during quarantine? Ooh, mm -hmm. I have two actually. I'm Ooh. sorry. Can I do two? I will yeah. allow two. First one is uh, Peloton yeah. for sure. Peloton yoga was something that kept me going <laughs> in cool. 2020, um, but also astrology. I got really mm -hmm. into astrology. What is your sign? But, what? What's your sign? Sun sign is Libra. Libra. But so many. Now I have, there's so many layers, that, which yeah. is exciting. So yeah. That's amazing. That was, that was mine. Yeah. What's, what's yours? Uh, for me, I would say last summer when we started kind of reopening slowly, it was cottaging and like spending time with, with friends by the lake, uh, which I forgot how it even felt. <laughs> so <But> it is. <laughs> so silver lining is like it was, it was definitely a great summer that, that we spent with our family members and friends, um, you know, just, just chilling by the water on a random Saturday. Having weekends. <laughs> having having weekends. Um, and then, you know, like I probably got more into investing and trading and that helped me to kind of learn more about the new, new industries and all the up and coming trends and the things that are about to happen, which was pretty mind blowing. It was like, you know, learning about this, some of this new up and coming companies was like watching uh, an episode of Black Mirror yeah. <laughs> so. 2020 is an episode of Black Mirror. Well, <laughs> that's it, 100%. Uh, so this, is, this is just the beginning. <laughs> Not to scare anyone. I don't mean it in a bad way, but I'm just saying, like, you know, all the, all the changes that we're yet to experience are going to be pretty mind blowing, I'm sure. Yeah. So, well, that's good. You're using the time for a little bit of education as well. How about you? Um, there was a similar in reconnecting with family over the summer. And then mm -hmm. much like you, Svetlana, I've gotten into the astrology as well. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am an Aries with an upcoming birthday, actually. So March is my month. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun to, uh, to look into it. And with the conjunction that just ha happened, which I'm sure you're aware of, which I don't know how many listeners are aware of that with the two planets being aligned, it's just... It's yeah. a pretty, pretty cool thing to kind of get into. So things are, things are about to improve, right? According to astrology. That's so right. <laughs> it's very true. Things are about to improve okay. as a whole, globally. Yeah. Yeah. Something at to look the, forward at to. The, at the beginning, I was kind of like, you know, not really a believer or I was, you know, teasing Svetlana a little bit, but, you know, a year into this pandemic, I was like, that, that was, that's almost like your only hope. Like, what did the stars say? You can't rely, <laughs> you can't rely on your government. So maybe, maybe the stars are going to be a little bit more help. It's a lot of fun. Well, thanks guys. And where can people find you before I let you go? 
where can people find us on instagram you mean <laughs> no what's your address <laughs> what's your <Our> address, address? <laughs> <laughs> business address with it always like confuses me because like mintrum purple tree but we, 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 that's we can true be, we can be anywhere can be anywhere, anywhere around still the downtown core so our purple tree office is next to george brown on adelaide and jarvis uh, but we spend quite a bit of time in the studios at Mintrum. Uh, always on the lookout for new locations. Uh, so spending. That's the only thing that's allowed, actually. That's another thing that we kind of got into. You can't, you can't go to a restaurant. You got, can't go to theater. But you can still, you know, call your real estate agent yeah. and go see some commercial spaces or, <laughs> or homes. Uh, yeah, so still kind of moving around as much as, much as we can. But uh, the base is Jerusalem, um, Adley. Amazing. Well, we'll put the link to your websites, Mint Room and Purple Tree below mm -hmm. so people can check it out and they can find you. And thanks for stopping in to talk. Yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs> you too. <laughs> give a like, give a subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> um, and we'll thanks. You it's always fun to sit with you guys. So I appreciate it. What's that? Next one is going to be in person. In person. Hey, fingers crossed. We're almost there. <laughs>